All right, so I'm going to play through one more uh, example here, and I think you'll see why I've chosen this example to work through. So we're just given explicitly X bar is 92.44. We're given S is 5.6. We're given N is equal to 18. And we're given assume the population is normally distributed. Is it clear why? Since the sample size is less than 30, if this piece of information were not given, then for us at this stage of the game, we could not do this problem. But uh, because this statement is given, we have met the sufficiently large sample size requirement because if the population is normally distributed, then any sample size is sufficiently large. And we're asked to do this. Test, is the mean different from 90? 90. Is the mean different from 90? 90. All right, so let's see if we can formulate the hypotheses. Different. Different doesn't mean only less than. If something can be different from a, a, a value by either being too low or it could be too high. All we want to know is whether this number, we're not concerned about whether it's too low or too high. We just want to know is if it is different from 90. 90. And so different, that's code, that's statistics code for not equal to. So our, our alternate hypothesis is mu not equal to 90. Is it clear why? This cannot not be correct. This cannot be correct because the null hypothesis must involve equality. The alternate involves inequality. And so if this is not equals, that requires that the null hypothesis is equal to, uh, mu is equal to 90. Uh, number two, there is no alpha given. We're going to use 0 0.05. That's our default setting. Number three, we have the data. Uh, we actually have it written here, but I'll just uh, put it down here so we have it for consistency's sake. The sample size is 5.6. I'm sorry, the, the standard deviation, rather. And N is 18. So our uh, T-score is X bar minus mu sub zero over S over square root of N. Degrees of freedom are N minus one. So what do we have here? This is X bar is 92.4, 92.44 minus mu sub zero is 90 over, and then we have S divided by square root of N, that's 5.6, over the square root of our N is 18. And so let's see if we can actually do this computation here. I'm going to actually see if I can make this calculator function. I have an open parenthesis, right, open parenthesis, 92.44 minus 90. Uh, divide by open, I have 5.6, divided by the square root of 18, close, close. And my number is 1.84, I'm going to round this, 1.849. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, 1.849 is what I'm going to round my value to. And my degrees of freedom Our n minus 1, so in our case, what's my n is 18. So we're in the 17 degrees of freedom row. All right, I'm going to write that over here. Save myself a little space. All right, so step four, p-value. We are in the 17 degrees of freedom row, which is right here on my little table. And we need to find the two numbers between which 1.849 falls. Well, 1.849 in the 17 degrees of freedom row falls between 1.740 and I have 2.110.
So those are the two numbers between which this falls. The test statistic gives rise to the p-value. Reverse the direction of the inequality. Uh, 1.740, look at the number at the top or the bottom because this table is so well designed table. And the number at the margin is 0.05. The number at the top of this column is 0 0.025. And now, now, now we come to the point where we have to double the p-value. Now, the issue is this. You're likely to forget. You just go merrily along your little way. So this is my recommendation, and this is what Dr. Beersman told us. Every time, every time, every time, every time, every time, ask yourself, do you need to double the p-value? Do you need to double this? Do you need to double the p-value? Yes, because this is, one, this is a two-tailed test, equals not equals. So where does the doubling occur? You double this number, 0 0.05 doubles to become 0.10. This number doubles to become 0 0.05. And then you continue merrily along your little way. So we find the values at the top, and if it's a two-tailed test, they get doubled. If it's a one-tailed test, they don't. That's for our purposes in terms of the computation. That's the only difference. Now, step five, into this inequality string, we insert alpha. Alpha is in the inequality string, so our decision p-value is greater than alpha. Our rule is reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than alpha. Reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than alpha. It is not, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. And there we go.